Great. Thank you so much. So I want to go ahead and say welcome back to everyone. Welcome back. I hope that you guys are, are doing well. It's another Friday afternoon, and I'm hoping that we can again have a very engaging and exciting conversation, just like we did last week. I mean, we had such a great time together. A lot of great questions were asked. I want to go ahead and shout out to some of you who reached out to me on Instagram to ask me some questions after the conversation that we had last week. So Meek, well done. We had an interesting conversation there on how do you keep yourself motivated? How do you keep yourself just on top of it? Even when you look around you and there's a lot of doubt, right? So congratulations to you for asking me that question. So I want to see how, how is everyone doing? Because like I said to y'all last time, and I really hope that we have as many people who were there last time today, because I want to see what you guys are thinking. What are you guys thinking? What has been the conversation that you have been having with yourself in the course of the last week, right? So you can go ahead and put it in the chat. And like we also talked about the last time, please make sure that you're engaging as much as possible. You know, give me a thumbs up if you understand something, a heart, clap of hands, but let's have engagement as much as possible, even though we're still on Zoom, right? Like let's pretend like we're in person together so that you are as engaged. I see that you're engaged as possible. And of course, if you can do turn on your camera because that also makes the engagement a lot more organic. It makes it a lot more organic. It makes it a lot more interesting. So I see you, Peter. Thank you once again this week for turning on your camera. Um, Sankima as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. The people that I see, y'all know, those are the people I call on. So if I see you, I call on you because you are right here in front of me. Hi, Elvis. Lovely to see you. So thank you guys for turning on your camera. Thank you for paying attention. And thank you for asking questions as well. So let's start. Let's go ahead and start. This is part two of our conversation on discovering your why. And today we're really going to be talking about how do you translate after you understand who you are, after you understand your identity, right? You understand your personality, you understand your strengths, you understand your dreams because you've done the exercises that you guys were asked to do last week. What happens after the fact? So before we get into answering those questions, how are you guys, what are y'all thinking about? How was, how has been the self-conversation you've been having? Has, how has been your introspection that you've been having in the course of the last week? Anybody want to share? Share. You can raise your hand and I can call on you so you can use your mic or you can go ahead and put it in the chat. So what is the conversation that you have been having with yourself? And how have you? Yeah. What have you been talking to yourself about since the last time that we we talked about your your identity, your identity, your strengths, your experiences, your passions, your dreams as being fundamentally at the core of your why? Yes, absolutely, Meek, go ahead. If you can turn on your camera, that's great. Otherwise, please go ahead, Meek. Okay, um, good afternoon. Uh, I hope you're doing well, and uh, I hope I'm heard clearly. Mm -hmm. We can hear you. Yes. Yeah, um, <clears throat> personally, I think uh, it's been amazing uh, trying to, to figure out everything. I feel there's just more into it after realizing your, your personality type, um, understanding the the depth of it understanding yourself better there's more into it especially when when you sit down and and just start um uh thinking about it you just start internalizing uh, uh how much your life has been how far you've gone and how where, where you want to be um in the coming years i think it's, it's a it's a very huge step and there's a lot a lot a lot of things into it and uh i'm so excited for this station especially because um, I feel like uh, it's that moment that you really need to know now what's next after discovering this, who you are, and uh, you know this, what um, uh, I need to do now. Getting to the next step is pretty much exciting, yes. Absolutely, absolutely, Meek. Well done. Congratulations to you. I'm guessing you had a chance to go through all the exercises? Yes, yes, definitely. Okay, fantastic. And what did you find to be most useful for you? Which of which of the exercises did you find was like, wow, like this is really, really useful. I had, I had no idea this is what I wanted. I had no idea this is who I was. 
um i'd say uh, number one was the personality type uh mm. area um basically understanding that uh, i felt like uh, way before i felt like um um not knowing that much not many people understand me around me and uh it's like it's okay after realizing that i was like it's okay so there's someone out there so there are people like me out there and basically people understand whatever i'm going through it was kind of frightening at first because i'm not used to someone knowing who i am it's like intriguing as uh, someone intruding your personal space but uh understanding the whole aspect of it getting to understand that personality test it was uh that was the most exciting part for me Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. fantastic thank you so much for your contribution Meek. I really appreciate thank it thank you and thank you for taking taking your time to do the exercises this can only be useful but for yourself right it's it's a personal exercise it's what you put into it is exactly what you get out of it so well done Clifford yes go ahead please um, good day everyone uh, from Accra Ghana here all right, so uh, last week I was actually moving while I was being part of the show. So, yeah, but today I'm home, so I'm I'm actually uh, at a life and I can hear. Let's mm -hmm. get a Yeah, after I didn't get a chance to go through the exercises before the first uh, one, uh, but after mm -hmm. going through them now, I got to realize that at least. Uh, you know, first somebody could ask you, who are you? And you struggle to like, at least see one thing about yourself or something. But having gone through the personality test, I think I got something that uh, opened more about myself or showed me more about myself. And especially getting the core, uh, the core values. You realize that almost all the things that are there, they are good things that you could, you follow, you are one of these. Mm -hmm. uh, but you have to also know that uh, one of the ranks ahead of the other. So that was actually mm -hmm. the exciting part and the most challenging part, uh, defining my five core key values. And, but I was able to come out of it. And I think that was uh, the exciting part for me. And mm -hmm. then the challenging part. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much, Clifford. I'm happy that you took the time to do the exercises. And yes, all those values are positive, right? Like you're like, but that's me. That's me. That's me. All of these, like, that's me. I'm a good person. I'm, I'm a person of integrity. I'm an honest person. I'm a family person. But that exercise really forces you to go deep, right? It forces you to be like, okay, wait. But if I had to really, really choose, who am I? What are my core values? And can when, once you define them, the idea is that once you understand your core values, you have to begin to live in alignment with your core values. Like that's it. It means that whatever decisions you make in the future, cho job choices, career path, it should be aligned with your core values because that's what makes you who you are. You have nothing else to show off about who you are except for your personality and the core values that really define the fabric of who you are as a person. So I'm happy that you took the time to understand how those are a defining part of who you are. And I'm hoping and expecting that as you make decisions about your career, about your family life, about, you know, how you want to make an impact in the world, they would always be in alignment with your core values. So thank you so much, Clifford. Fantastic. Peter, I see you have your hand up. I think P Peter's audio is still connecting. Okay, Peter, go ahead and connect your audio. I'll try again. Otherwise, I'm going to ask Ruth why you figure that out. Ruth, go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Ruth, we cannot hear you. Okay, I'm not sure exactly what is going on with Ruth. Her mic is not working. So we'll wait for her. And I know the other person who wanted to share was Peter. Is there anybody else who wants to talk about 
Okay. Is there anybody else who wants to talk about any of the exercises and what, you know, what meaning and what value they added to who you are? I, I love as often as possible, y'all, I always go back to my core values. I go back to my core values. I go back to my future self, right? And I do that exercise every couple of years. Okay, so I'll come back to that. Peter, go ahead. You're muted, Peter. Okay, for whatever reason, we can't hear you at all. Maybe try taking off your headphones to see if that helps and then come back and try again, Peter. Yeah, we have time. So we're going to have plenty of opportunities to share. So I'll let you figure out what's going on with your audio and then we'll move ahead. But what I was saying is that, you know, every couple of years, every couple of years, I take my time and not even every couple of years, what am I talking about? Every couple of months, every couple of months, I take my time and I go through my list of core values I go through my personality, again, read about it, understand myself more. I go through my strengths. In fact, um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but I have my my notebook here. This is where I take my notes. And uh, if, you if you see here on my notebook, here I have the list of all my strengths, right? My core, my core, core strengths. So I always have them with me so that I'm reminded from what position I should be working on. I should always be working from the position of my strengths. I should always working from the position of my values. I should always be working in position of what my future self is. Like, what am I really working towards? What am I wanting to build? What kind of impact am I trying to make in the world? So ensuring that whatever planning I'm doing for my life is actually in perfect alignment with the things that I that matter the most to me. So the reason why I wanted y'all to do this exercise is because like I said to you guys the last time, your why is tied to your identity. It is tied to your gifts. It's tied to your talents, to your strengths. You're not going to be doing something impactful in the world or your why is not going to be attached to something that you don't have within you as a person. Whatever it is, that is your why. You already have what it takes to be able to fulfill it. You already have the gifts that are required of you and in you to be able to fulfill your why. So these exercises were really tools. They were really tools for y'all to be able to begin to utilize now and to begin to practice and go back to them for the rest of your life. If you want to make something out of yourself, you cannot not plan strategically your life. If you want to make something out of yourself, you cannot not know who you are, who you are, what your personality is, what are your strengths, what might be some of your weaknesses and, and points that you need to improve as a person. What are your dreams? What are your passions? What are you passionate about, right? If you want to make something out of yourself, you have to know those things. Otherwise, you're going to believe everything that the world tells you you are. You're going to believe whatever it is that people tell you you are. And what I want to help you all understand is that fundamentally, you have to be the person who knows you the most. Like, people should not have to come and explain you to you. Like, you should be able to explain yourself to yourself first. Like, who are you? Like, you should be able to have a conversation with yourself about who you are. Like, who are you as a person? Be able to have that conversation with yourself about who you are and then be able to tell other people who you are. Be able to teach other people who you are. Be able to teach other people what your abilities are, what your strengths are, what are your boundaries as a person as well. But you can't be able to articulate and have those conversations with others if you do not fundamentally know those things for yourself. And that's why we had to start that conversation there. We had to... On discovering your why, you had to be able to fundamentally, first and foremost, discover what are you, what are you, what is your personality, what are you good at, right? What are your strengths? What are your abilities? What are your talents? 
What are your passions as well? What are your passions? And what we're going to really talk about today is the next step beyond that, right? What is your why? And your why is, like I said, is tied to your talents. And it's also really tied to your dreams. What do you desire to become? Where do you want to make an influence in the world? Last time I asked you guys a question about just what are you hoping for and what do you see yourself as, right? What do you see yourself as? And we had a lot of different answers in the chat. I see myself as a leader. I see myself as a member of my family, a member of my community. We had some really dynamic and interesting answers in the chat last time. So we're going to pick up the conversation that we're having today from there, helping you really understand how do you move now that you have this fabric of your identity in front of you. You've got your personality, you've got your strengths, you've got your passions, you've got your future self and your dreams, and you understand more your experiences, your life timeline, and what has made you who you are, where are you headed, right? So now we're talking about where are you headed and how do you get there? How do you get there? How do you get to living in the embodiment of your why, living in the fullness of your why? How do you get to that place? So I want to go ahead and read something that Ruth Ruth said, sorry about that. I would text instead. I realize how to set realistic goals in accordance to my personality. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have to be able to set goals that are in alignment with your personality, that are in alignment with your identities, with your experiences, with your dreams, with whatever it is that you want to achieve as a person. Yeah, like always, please, if you have any questions at any point, let me know. Like I said to y'all, this conversation is going to be super interactive because it's going to be a discovery about who you are. It's going to be an exploration about who you are and what you are meant to be doing, why you are here. So like I said, y'all, I, I wanted to, to talk about myself and share a little bit more about my experience like we started the last time so that you guys can like understand, like I said, I am a chick from Malawi who just believed enough, believed enough in my dreams and, and thanks for the sacrifices that my parents made, but who really believe, believed enough in my dreams and believed enough that I had what was required and I had what it took to be able to make my dreams come to life. So from very early on, y'all, like I said the last time, from very early on, I discovered that I was extremely extroverted and that I was a people person. I was a people person. I love people. I love connecting to people. I love motivating, encouraging people and giving people the tools to be able to really just thrive in who they are. It's a fundamental aspect of the ENFJ personality. And then I also know that I'm very curious. Like I love books. I love reading. I love knowledge. I love school. I just love understanding the world around me. So here I am, communications, you know, somebody who really loves people, who loves to win other people and encourage other people. And then somebody who also really loves strategy and who's very curious and who's who likes knowledge. So for me, from very early on, I knew that I wanted to do a PhD. I knew I wanted to do a PhD. I knew that one day when I'm old, that was the idea. When I'm like 50, 50 is not even old. Like when I'm like 60, 50, 60, 70, I would use this PhD to, to be a professor. And I wanted to initially, I wanted to, to research. I wanted to research on women. I wanted to research on African people. That was really my passion. And I found this out when I was in university. I was an undergrad. I must have been like 19, 18 or 19, where I was like, you know what? I got to be a doctor, okay? Whatever kind of doctor it is, I got to be it, but I know that I have to do it. Now, the question fundamentally was, how do you get there, right? How do you get there? So here I was, I I, I like knowledge. I want to I wanna be a doctor, but then I'm like, I also really one day want to want to start my own company. I started my first company. I think I mentioned this in our meeting the last time. I started my own company when I was 17 years old. I was 17 when I first, 17 or 18, I was 18 when I first started my first leadership company. And what I'm doing here is exactly what I was doing in university to other students. I was helping students run for elections on campus, people who wanted to become the president of the, students wanted to become the president of the university, the senator of the university. 
I was the one coaching them and encouraging them and working with them to help them through that process. So here I'm um, going through the course of my life. I'm using what I know I'm good at, right? But I'm still thinking much bigger. I'm like, yeah, but I also really one day want to, you know, have a bigger company. Like this was a company in university. And I also know that one day I want to have a PhD. So from very early on, I created a plan for myself. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. I created a plan for myself. I created short-term intermediate and long-term goals for myself. I knew that if I was going to be able to one day have a company, if I was going to be able to one day have a PhD, teach at the university, I knew that I needed a plan. I needed a plan that would help me get there, right? I was an undergrad, 18. I'm like, okay, what do I need? What do I need for me to do a PhD, right? To be honest with you, it was just a dream. It was a dream. It was a dream. It was a dream. I didn't really understand the reality of actually what was going to be required for me to do the PhD. I didn't understand the reality of what was going to be required to start and run a business and actually have team teams and people who work with me. I had no idea, but I knew that this is something that I needed to do for myself and I needed to give myself the chance to actually be able to do it. So I created a plan. And over the years, this is what I've been using. So that's what we're going to be talking about right now, y'all. We're going to be talking about how do you move from just having a dream to actually creating a vision for yourself so that you can actually make this dream become a reality. It's one thing to have a dream. It's another thing for you to have a vision. And then another thing for you to have to have actions. You have to be able to move from your beauty and your future self, right? When you think about your future self, you have to be able to move from this is my future self in theory to actually then in practice, how do I become my future self? What do I need to do today and tomorrow and next year and the year after, you know, to build my future self? Of course, life is going to happen. And of course, sometimes you're going to have to remove some of those things on your list, but how do you begin to build your future self? What do you need to be doing in every single season and every single chapter of your life to build your future self? If you're in high school, if you're in university, what do you need to be doing so that you can actually achieve whatever it is that you have set for yourself? So before I start sharing the different strategic planning tools that you guys can utilize, I want to ask y'all, what did you discover about yourself in your future self? When you were working on your future self, like I want to hear what are the dreams that came up when you are looking at your life 10 years from now? Where are you? What are you doing? Who are you with? Where are you living? What company are you running? I want to hear from y'all. Tell me, what do you see for yourselves as examples in the next 10 years? Raise your hand, please, so that we can. Thank you. Go ahead, Clifford, please. Um. Yeah, I actually see myself uh working partially <laughs> at that time, uh being the CEO of my company and also sitting at some of the boards of some of my companies that I I have set. They are not automated. They are self-sufficient that they can mm -hmm. run without me. I only go to board meetings and uh, all of that. But uh, being spending time with the family at home and all that. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's, what I feel. Uh, that's absolutely beautiful. So you see yourself as an entrepreneur and not just any kind of entrepreneur. You see yourself as an entrepreneur who's able to build the kind of enterprise that can be self sufficient. Yeah. Meaning that you, you can hire a CEO, you can hire a CFO. You can hire everybody and your, your only role is on the board of directors. Yeah. I love it. I love it. 10 years, Clifford, 10 yeah. years. I absolutely love it. So we're definitely going to use you as an example as we start the strategic planning, because that's one of the things that I'm going to share with you guys, documents that you can use to, to plan, to plan, to plan. How do you get there? Right. So 10 years from now, you have a company. It means that the company is doing so well and you know, you're making enough profit and covering all your costs that you're able as a founder to be able to step away. You're able to hire somebody to take us a lot of what we do as I'm a founder and CEO, right? So 
not only am I a founder, but I'm also running the operations of the company in so many ways. And the dream is that the dream is for you to be able to build the kind of enterprise, even for me, where I can be like, listen, I'm not trying to do the operational everyday activities. I want to focus on the things that I like. I want to serve on the board of directors and I want to to do workshops and coaching. I don't want to have to be chasing people and writing letters and sending emails and looking for clients. Like I want to hire people to be able to do that, right? But it requires a strategic plan to be able to get there. And it is absolutely, absolutely, absolutely possible. As long as you have the vision for it and it's clear and it's tangible and you see it and you can imagine yourself going into your offices and saying hi to everyone and being like, I'm only here for the board meeting. It is absolutely because it has to start from you being able to see it to actually being able to actualize it, right? So such a perfect example. Somebody else, let me have one more person who was engaged in the exercise who can tell us who is their future self so that we can also use you as an example in our exercises. Marielle, yes, absolutely. Please go ahead. Marielle, go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay. Um, I see myself 10 years from now is that I am doing three things. First is I am still working in by, by profession because I want to be an accountant someday. And then um, I'm sorry, I've been caught up. Oh, um, I wanted to. I want, also wanted to like uh, do some masters in law and finance because that's actually what I envision myself um, 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I want to be like uh, having my own business, probably in the food industry because it's one of my hobbies to like bake things. So I want to explore um, things regarding that business and it would be somewhat like a family business. Mm hmm Fantastic. Okay, so you want to do your master's in law and finance, right? Yes. And then you want to be working in the finance industry. What was the first one? Accounting? Yes. Yes. Um, Probably in a corporate world because I, I also have like this dream, some um, dreams that I've been working in an office, but at the same time, I have my own business. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's absolutely doable. Absolutely. Fantastic. So we have another example here from Marielle. So we have an example from Clifford. And then we have an example from Marielle. Marielle, who wants to have a portfolio career. And a portfolio career is basically a career that brings different parts of who you are together, right? So she wants to work in corporate, more specifically work in corporate law or finance or and finance. And then also wants to have a business um, as part of that. But before she gets there, one of the things that she needs is that she wants to do her master's degree, right? So in the next 10 years, she should have done her master's degree. She should be working corporate and she should be running a business. Very realistic, actually, and absolutely, absolutely doable. Absolutely doable. Thank you so much, Marielle. Is there anybody else wants to share with us? Anybody else? That who wants to share with us? Okay, fantastic. So right now, the only thing that I would ask y'all is, you know, wherever you are, just bring, bring your, so you have your personality assessment, you have your, your future self as well. Then you have your life experiences, right? Right here in this conversation today, we're really going to be focusing on your future self, the exercise on your future self. So who do you imagine yourself as in 10 years so that we can really talk about like, how do you get there? Because part of you getting there is your why. So you're discovering your why. You're discovering what you're here to do in light of what your talents are and in light of what your future self is is saying to you, right? So Clifford, part of your why is that you want to be an entrepreneur, right? So 
bringing solutions to the, to the world's problems through entrepreneurship because i look as at entrepreneur i'm an entrepreneur myself so i look at i look at us as solution bringers we see a problem we create a solution right that's what we do so part of your why is that you want to solve problems through entrepreneurship you want to create enterprises and you said multiple enterprises and just be in 10 years just at the board of directors of those enterprises looking to solve the you know problems through, through that framework. For Marielle, Maria talked about her, her passion for food, her passion for food. What does food do? Food brings people together, brings families together, brings joy. So part of how why could be that, part of how why could be that she actually enjoys bringing joy to people when they come together, when they are around breeding community. But at the same time, she's also somebody who's interested in corporate. So she must be very smart. I'm interested in more specifically in finance and law, right? So this is also another aspect of the expression of your why. Our careers, you guys, our careers are expressions of our whys, okay? Meaning that what you do is not who you are. What you do is not who you are. Who you are is what we've just discovered. What you do is an extension of who you are. And what you do, your career is an extension of your why. It is an expression of your, your career, your business is an expression of your why. So once you know your why, once you know your why, maybe your why. So for, for example, for me, my why is motivating, encouraging, inspiring people, in particular women and students to live the best of who they are and to achieve the life of their dreams. That is my why, right? And how do I express my why? I express my why through teaching at the university. I express my why through teaching in context like this, webinars like this. I express my why through my company, ETK Leadership Solutions, where I teach through coaching, one-on-one -on -one group coaching. I express my why by creating and curating events where people come together and where they can be motivated, where they can be encouraged, where they can meet people like them and build community around them. So these are all the different ways in which I express my why. But fundamentally, what is my why? My why, my why is to inspire, to motivate, to encourage, to build people so that they can live in the fullest potential of who they are. So as you get along in the course of your life, you're going to begin to more clearly understand your why. But part of how you start is by looking at the, what could be the expressions of your why. You want to do your business. You want to run your company. You want to work in corporate. You want to work in corporate while running your business. You want to travel the world. There are so many different expressions as to, there are so many different ways that we can express our why in ways that are fulfilling to who we are. So today we're really going to be talking about, like I said, moving into understanding your why but fundamentally by first looking at your future self and how you can build towards your future self. How can you build towards your future self? How can you create goals and action points that allow you to be able to fulfill what you need to fulfill for your future self? Are there any questions so far? Are there any questions so far, you guys? You guys are extremely quiet today. Okay, that's absolutely fine. No questions. Can you guys at least let me know that you're still listening? Okay, so Clifford is still listening. Is Clifford the only person still listening? <laughs> Put it in the chat that you're still listening so that we know exactly what we're dealing with here, y'all. Fantastic. Thank you guys. Okay. Wonderful. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 
Thank you so much, Ruth, and everybody for your active engagement, you guys. Okay, great. So what I want to go ahead and do right now, like I said, y'all, is I want to share with you guys. I want to share with you guys what you can use, what you can use to help you activate and to bring to life your future self, right? So how do you bring to life your future self? And it's really about strategic planning. It's really about creating goals. It's really about putting these things down on paper so that you have a fabric to follow for the rest of your life. I started doing this exercise when all the way, let me see how many years, let me just do the math. It's a long time ago. Minus. I started doing this exercise 16 years ago, 16, 17 years ago. And it's been one of the most fundamentally amazing things that I've ever done. So I was 18. I was 18 when I started doing this exercise of intentionally life planning. And I'm going to go ahead and show you proof of that. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys um, just proof of that and then get into how you can also do the same thing, right? So let me go ahead and share my screen. Um, Boniface, can you please give me the right to share my screen? And please let me know when you have Boniface. Yeah, you should be able to share now. And should I be able to share now? Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right, you guys. So here we are. So I've been life planning and we're going to be talking about since 2008, 2008. And basically 2008, I wrote down what my short-term goals were, what my intermediate goals were, and what my long-term goals were, right? I wrote this down in 2008 and have since been following. So I always, every time I edit this, I go ahead and um, I save, I save it as new. So if you can look at, if you can look at here, you can see that 2008, every year, 2009, 2010, 11, several times in a year. Let's see what was going on in 2012. 2012, I had the plan of getting into a PhD program. Okay. And here we are in 2024, 12 years later, um, I, I, I was able to do it. Um, I finished, you know, more than five years ago, but basically my point being that you have to be able to create plans for yourself that allow you to be able to know what you need to be doing step-by-step step for you to be able to get there. So the first, the first uh, planning worksheet that I'm going to share with you is this one right here which you should be able to see. Do you see anything on, on your screen? Do you see it? Yeah, you can see. Okay, fantastic. This is what I share with clients. This is what I share with students. It's called life planning, right? It helps you be able to take what you've, the story that you've written of your future self and actually be able to put it down in ways that are tangible. So your future self would be here, 10 plus years, right? So you imagine yourself 10 years from now, you would actually then put your future self right here, okay? And then from your future self, you wanna look at, okay, what do I need to be doing in the next six months? What do I need to be doing in the next year or two? What do I need to be doing in the next three to four years? And what do I need to be doing in the next five to seven years so that I can actually achieve my goals 10 years from now. It sounds very, very tedious. And like I said, it is going to change and you're gonna move things around. But you wanna be able to see tangibly what are the immediate steps that you need to be taking now to prepare you for your long-term goal. So for example, Clifford said to us that in 10 years, he wants to be a board, a board member, probably the board of directors, okay? So what does he need to do? How do you get to the point where you are a board of directors? It means that your company has accumulated so much, so many resources, so many millions of dollars, right? That you're able to take a passive role 
and hire a CEO, hire a CFO, hire a COO to be able to do that daily operational work. That way you can just be a, a member of the board of directors. So what do you need to be doing? Okay, so I need to think about what is the, what is the problem in the world in the next six months? What is the problem in the world that I can solve through a business? What is the problem that I want to solve through business? What have I observed? Okay. Then after I figure that out, I need to create a business plan to see whether the business is viable or not. Then as part of the business plan, I need to be able to create a go-to-market strategy. But before I can even go to market, now that I have a business, I need a website. I need to create a website. I need to create social media, social media pages. I need to create a content strategy. I need to create a create a content strategy. Okay, so I look at it and I'm like, okay, do I really have the time to do all these things now? Okay, so I'm really, really busy with other things in my life. So maybe I can just work on creating a business plan or, or work on finding the problem. And in the next year, that's when I can create a business plan. Okay. And then I know that I can launch my company. But am I going to launch my company on my own? Or do I need to find funding? You, you start creating, you basically move backwards, moving from where you want to be to imagining what you need to be creating as a step for you to finally be able to get there, okay? So this is one way that you can do it, is through life planning, okay? I'm gonna share different worksheets with you guys, but is this clear for everyone? Yeah. Yeah? Fantastic. But then because it's life planning, you guys, you're just not thinking about your business, okay? You're also thinking about, for example, Maria said that she wants to do, she needs to have a master's done by, in the next 10 years, master's degree. Because you're thinking about different avenues of your life. So maybe you also want to get married, okay? So what are the things that you need to be doing now to prepare for your master's degree? Okay, I need to make sure that what schools, what schools would I want to go to? do research, okay? You know, what schools offer scholarship if I don't have the resources to pay for school? Okay? And then what grades do I, they need? They need you to get a perfect uh, 4.0. I need to get and maintain a 4.0 in school, okay? Then what do I need in order for me to actually finally get there? Okay, so I'm not applying now, but I want to apply in the next year. So here, apply to master's programs. But before I apply, don't I, don't I need recommendation letters? Get recommendation letters from professors. But in order for me to get recommendation letters, don't I need to have a, a good relationship with, with professors? Build good relationships with professors, okay? So building good relationships with professors is gonna help you get a recommendation letter, which is gonna help you apply for your master's program, which then the following year, you're gonna be accepted into a master's program. Are we clear? Yeah. Yeah, does it make sense? We are good. We are good. <laughs> we, are full, we are following. <laughs> I know you guys are following, but the thing about it is that I don't have anybody on camera. It's just me staring at the screen to myself. Oh, yeah. So I'm All not right. sure. I'm not sure exactly exactly who's listening, who's not. That's the thing with webinars, you guys. And it's part of again professional etiquette, right? Part of you learning also how to be professionals and and really because it's it's a lot to to be on a webinar and to share 
and you're sharing to people and everyone like there's nothing there's no reactions no one is saying anything there's no likes so you're like wait are people listening or i'm just having am i having this conversation all all by myself so anyways this is one part of of what you can do in, ter in terms of life planning and for your life planning like i said this is really for it's very comprehensive so it looks at the different categories of your life and what matters to you the most you know what you want to achieve in school what do you want to achieve in your family life? Okay, you want to get married in the long term, 10 years from now. Fantastic. What do you need to be doing before, in order for you to get there? If you want to have a wedding, how much money do you need to be saving? Before you can save money, you need to get a job. Okay, where do you want to get a job? You want to get a job in corporate? At what point do you need to get a job in corporate, right? It allows you to begin to plan and see all the different steps that you need to be able to take to get to where you want to get to in your life. Okay, so this is just an example of life planning. I'm going to go ahead and share with you guys several other examples, maybe one, one or two more. So that you can. Um, let me see which one do I want to. Yes, exactly. Here's a really great one as well. So. Here's a personal strategic plan, right? So you have the life planning, then you also have a personal strategic plan that you can use precisely to break down all your different goals, right? To break down all your different goals. So here you have um, what you can put as your vision. What is your vision as a person? What is your mission? What are your top five strengths, which you guys should know because of your personality assessment? And then what are your top five values, which you also should also know because of your values assessment, okay? Then based on what you're wanting to achieve, right? So let's say, for example, in 2024, your vision is going back to our life planning. Your vision is to, um, or your goal, let's, let's call it a goal, is to really just create a business plan, okay? So one, one, so this is your personal vision. So we wouldn't go here, but let's say one of your goals is this. Then you would have to then create smart goals. What do you need to do at different steps to be able to actually finally create a business plan, right? What is your objective? So objective here, actually, yeah, create a business plan would actually go in objective, you guys. Sorry about that. It would go in objective. Your vision, your, your personal vision would be to solve problems in the world, as a successful business person. That's your personal vision. So I'm using Clifford as an example here. What is what is one of your objectives this in 2024 to be able to achieve that? Okay, I need to create a business plan. I, um, I need to save money, save money in order to create the website and go to market. And maybe another objective is find business partners to work with, okay? So you have your, this is your focus plan for 2024. You have your objectives, your three objectives when it comes to you becoming a successful business person who solves the world's problems. So what do you need to do? What would be a smart goal to create it? What would be an example of, a, of a, a smart goal? A smart goal, meaning it has to be specific. It has to be measurable. It has to be actionable. And it has to be time bound. That's what a smart goals is. So it's specific. Measurable, actionable, actionable, and R should be what is it? Ref no, not reflective. So what would be what would be an example? 
relevant and time bound. Okay, I just put it in the chat. So going back to this, which one are we working on? So Clifford, what would be an example of a smart goal for you? A smart goal for me would be to, already I've started the company, so I would do the scale up. So scaling up would be to uh, okay. acquire the, the type of customers that I want, uh, getting the a strong team, uh, getting a strong team to join, because if you want to be able to build a, a team that can be on autopilot for you, then you should be able to get a strong team at the start. Absolutely. So get a strong team and uh, focus on the marketing, uh, developing the marketing so that that can be able to penetrate the existing market and then get new customers for you. Absolutely. Yeah. It's perfect. Absolutely. So your objective number one would be to scale up, right? Then your smart goals would be acquire clients. And then obviously you, you can distinguish in there what are the different steps that you can use to acquire clients. Then you do you to build a strong team. Okay, how do you build a strong team? Because building a strong team is just not saying, hey, be a part of my strong team. You actually have to build them. You have to train them. You have to develop them. You have to mentor them. You have to coach them. So how do you build a strong team? How do you find the people who are willing to grow with you so that you can build them and invest in them so that they can become a strong team? You can go ahead and put goals under that as well. And then of course, then developing a marketing strategy, okay? You can also put all the different layers that come with developing a marketing strategy. Are you using only digital marketing or also are you using other traditional methods of marketing, right? So are you using billboards and television and radio or are you only focusing on content creation and social media and Facebook advertisement and all this other stuff, right? So that's all part of creating smart goals, right? So we'll just use an example. Is that clear for everyone? That's, that's clear. Do you guys have any questions? Um, yeah, I just wanted to ask about the smart goal. Sometimes I, I, you know, Miserable, time bound, and all that. Sometimes I, I know everything is time bound because even our life here on earth is time bound. <laughs> but <laughs> but sometimes people were explaining they seem they seem to uh make it the short term kind of thing that you should at least maybe a year, two years, five years. But I always look at how about I just bring up a ten year, twenty year plan because if it be able to make a plan that can live a generation. Absolutely. Uh, because training somebody to be able to lead or to be able to become a different person or to show the kind of person you want to be wouldn't take just one year to do. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. For example, my, my own thinking of uh, establishing a team that can be able to lead in my absence, it wouldn't take just five years to be able to no. build a network of talented people. So that means this goal could be like 10 years or 15 mm -hmm. Absolutely. So smart goals, do they have an exact time limit that people should really talk of or you can decide the time for yourself? Smart goals are really utilized for immediate actioning that has to happen now, right? What you're really talking about in terms of long-term, you're talking about strategic goals, right? Strategic goals are more the, the larger um, direction uh, of goals to be able to meet the strategic vision that you have as a company. Smart goals are usually time bound. It means that they're immediate. Smart goals are, what do I need to achieve in the next six months? What do I need to achieve in the next year? That's really where smart goals are. Smart goals, they can be utilized for long-term planning as well. But if you understand how long the long-term is going to be, and most times as entrepreneurs, we don't really always have the pleasure of understanding what long-term is because long-term can be 10 years, depending on what scaling up looks like to you, right? If I know that the value, I want my, the value of my company to be at least 350 million, then we're not talking about 
just 10 years, right? We're talking about legacy. We're talking about a lifetime kind of planning. So to keep your, to answer your question and keep it very, very simple, there's strategic planning that you have to do for your long-term direction of your company, right? Then there's the immediate planning. This is where you use smart goals. So the long-term goal is you want to have people that you can train who can eventually take over when you're gone. And when you're gone, as in like when you are on the board of directors, that's a long-term strategic goal. A smart goal would be what as what are the immediate steps that you can take today to begin that process, right? So maybe it's finding somebody young to train from very early on. Maybe it's finding an agency that you can work with that can begin to send you really credible candidates because your long your long term strategic goal is to actually raise people who are going to stay and carry on the legacy. So as part of your strategic planning is when you hire people, you tell them that, like, I'm not hiring you just to be with the company in the next 20 years or in the next five years. I'm hiring you to be with the company for a very long time. So part of your strategic planning is if you're only trying to stay here for a year, this is not the place for you. Because you're thinking long term, but then you're making decisions about the long term in the short term. Is that clear, Clifford? That's yeah. It. Does it answer your question? Yes, yes, please. Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. Anybody else? I'm going to go ahead and share these documents in the chat. Oh, absolutely. 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 This is amazing. Thank you so much, Ruth, for that great question. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share more about that in just a second. Um, right now, what I want to do is I'm going to just quickly share. Okay, I, I can't share anything from my computer. That's weird. Okay, I'll share the, the documents with with um, with Boniface and then he's going to be able to, to share them with you over email. So Ruth, that was a great question, which leads me closer to the end. I didn't even use my slide presentations, but I do this work so much that I know this slides from the top of my head. It really leads me to the end of my presentation on how do you keep yourself grounded and motivated and encouraged and even when obviously challenges are going to come and sometimes you might have to lose a business, right? So we've, we've already talked about creating a, an action plan, a step-by-step -step action plan, right? That's what I just showed y'all is how do you create a step-by-step -step action plan for life planning? How do you create a step-by-step -step action plan for strategic goals using the SMART goals methodology? And then part of that, you also have to imagine what are some of the potential obstacles and strategies to overcome them, right? Because obstacles are gonna come. So what are the, some of the obstacles that you can imagine and what are the strategies that you can develop to actually overcome them? Part of how, what you can also do is create vision boards. Vision boards allow you to be able to see your goals, to be able to see your future self loud and clear. So you have life planning, you have the, the strategic planning, the personal strategic planning that I shared with y'all, but then you also have vision boards where you can take your future self, find images that align with your future self, take those images, put them up on a board, allowing yourself to see your future self as often as possible through images. Because then images will create a sense of emotion and connection to your future self that allow, will allow you to make your goals a lot more concrete. Something else that you can, you can do is have a, an accountability partner. Having an accountability partner who understands your goals, who understands where you're headed, what you're wanting to do, they're going to help keep you accountable to your goals. So finding ways where you can support each other in achieving your goals is also a great way for you to keep yourself actionable to actually be able to actualize your dreams. That's extremely important. And then finally, to, to address the question that, um, the point that Ruth raised, Y'all, just because you have all these goals doesn't mean that it's going to happen in the way that you want it to happen. I can tell you, for example, that when I finished my master's degree, I wanted to go ahead and start a PhD program right away. And the only PhD program that I applied to, I was not accepted. Even though I had the grades, even though I had the perfect recommendation letter, 
even though I was involved on campus and I had a great CV, I was not accepted into the program. And I had to completely readjust my plans because I knew that I had to do the PhD. But because I didn't get accepted into the program that I wanted to initially go to, I had to readjust my plans to find another program that I could apply to the following year. So what I ended up having to do is I needed to take some time off because I really need, I wanted to just, you know, master's PhD, but I ended up having to take a year off. In the year, I created a different plan. I went to French school and learned how to speak French. I started working as a managing editor for, my, for a magazine and started managing all these people across the world. So I was able to gain leadership skills and build le leadership skills through that. And I did that in the course of one year. So life is going to happen just because you have a strategic plan does not mean that it's going to work out accordingly. Just because you have a life plan does not mean that everything is going to work out in that life plan the way that you want it to. So how do you keep yourself motivated, right? How do you keep yourself motivated? How do you maintain the mo momentum for your goals when life happens? You have to regularly self-reflect and self-examine, right? You have to have conversations with yourself as often as possible to really ask yourself, you know, what does this say about me? What am I learning through this process? What am I, how am I growing through this process? Another thing that you have to do is you have to push back on the doubt. Doubt is going to be there. It's normal, but you got to push back on it. Right now, I'm planning one of the biggest events that we've planned as a company. And I am so scared. I'm so scared. I have so much doubt. Even though we do this every year, I'm like, are we going to be able to pull this off? Are we going to be able to pull this off? But I have to push back on that. And even if I'm scared, I have to do it anyway. I got to do it anyway. This is part of my purpose. This is part of my why. I got to do it anyway. So sometimes it requires for you to understand that even if you're scared, you got to do it anyway. Another thing is to also understand what your lim limiting beliefs are and work to resolve them, right? So what are the things and the voices that you hear? What stops you? Is it because of where you come from? Is it because of the family that you come from? Is it because you don't have all the money in the world? You have to be able to recognize your limiting beliefs and be able to have a conversation with yourself to actually be able to resolve those limiting beliefs. Adjustment of your goals. Ruth, this goes to answer your question. Like I said, I wanted to enter into a PhD program right after my master's. I did not get in. I was devastated. I cried for weeks. I thought they were lying. I did not believe that me of all people did not get into a PhD program. And then I had to readjust my goals. I had to readjust my goals. Eventually when reality set in that, no, you really didn't get in because I was in denial. I was like, it's a lie. They sent this letter to the wrong person. Like, it cannot be me that did not get into a PhD program. I totally was believing, like, I was just telling myself stories. But when it finally dawned on me that, no, you didn't get into this program, I had to readjust my goals. I was like, okay, fine. I'll take a year off. I'll go to French school. I'll work. And then after that year, I'll start the PhD program. And that's exactly what happened. And then also, in order for you to sustain momentum and motivate yourself, you have to affirm, affirm who you are. You got to speak to yourself. You got to build yourself. You got to motivate yourself. You got to encourage yourself. Another thing is to find mentors and coaches who can help you. Who are the mentors and coaches that can work with you, that can help you, that can give you knowledge and tools and resources. And of course, attending webinars like this, workshops, conferences, also helps you build momentum, sustain momentum, and motivate you who you are. And finally, surround yourself with people who are aligned in values and who are positive. You need positive energy around you. The more positive energy that you have, the more that you're going to be able to sustain and build upon your goals. So if you have not been listening to anything that I've said, take a screenshot of this, take your phone, screenshot it, screenshot it, screenshot it. That way you can remind yourself that when the going gets tough, there are things that you can do for yourself to help yourself, okay? And that really brings us to the end of our two-part webinar conversation on discovering your why and being able to create plans that help you bring to life who you want to be as a person. So, um. fantastic. Any questions? Whenever you have a new path,
to one daddy. <laughs> I'll talk to Boniface and his team. Maybe we're going to eventually have a part three. But everybody has to agree to participate. Like, it has to be active participation. Last week was great. Some of you were great today as well. Clifford, thank you so much for turning your camera and being so actively engaged. And Marielle as well. And Peter, when you could. I really appreciate those of you who could, who could participate. So we can always definitely have a part three. But y'all have to demand it and say that you're going to be active and participating. Like to demand and participate now. <laughs> <Be active. laughs> Clifford, I believe you. I believe. You. So follow up, Clifford, follow up with, with Boniface. We could definitely always have, I mean, I think for me, the part three would really to be, would be for me to see how well you guys are doing, right? Like how are you activating and working towards your goals? How are you encouraging yourself, motivating yourself? Because at this point, we've, we've done a lot of theoretical conversation. We've talked about, last week, we talked about knowing your why, understanding your why, your personality, your passions, your identity, your strengths. Today, we talked about how do you bring your future self to life, right? How do you bring your talents in that? How do you bring your abilities in that to bring your future self to life? I give you guys very concrete actionable steps that you can utilize and take to build who you are. So my interest would be to really see whether you guys actually take these things into practice, right? Like when we send these worksheets to Boniface, are you guys able to take them and actually create smart goals for yourself and create a practice that allows you to, to have these exercises with yourself as often as possible? Like I showed you guys earlier, I started this exercise in 2008. And I do this in a few times in a year, looking at my long-term goals, looking at my short-term goals, looking at my entertainment and really measuring how well am I doing? How, where do I need to readjust? What else can I do better? And I do this for myself as a person. And I also do this in the context of my company because it's extremely important to know whether you're headed in the right direction or not. All right. Um, Bonifiz, if I, if I may speak, I... <laughs> So maybe I think uh, maybe six months time or a year time from today we could have the part three so that we at least have a review of what we did. Uh, maybe we at least give a feedback of what uh, the seminar has been, the impact that it has made, and all that. Mm -hmm. I think having it in the six months or one year wouldn't be bad. Uh, aside from that, I just want to ask a question to somebody already asked a question similar to that, but I also want to ask. Uh, I want to find out, you know, sometimes we have goals that we want to achieve and then we set goals with set time limits. Then out of nowhere, another opportunity comes and you see that oh, this one is tempting. The risk is that you could pick it and then it goes or it fails. And then you fail it too because your original plan and then the second plan Mm -hmm. The other option is that you could also ignore it and focus on the original plan. And then the second one that actually came and then you left it by was actually the one that could have taken you because mm -hmm. it actually worked out for something. Uh, so in situations like that, how do you handle it? How do you uh, determine between whether to take, not to take, mm -hmm. to continue on your path or to create a small path and add? Mm. Oh, what a fantastic question, Clifford. What a fantastic question. And this is where for me, my faith comes in, right? My faith comes in because at the end of the day, we can do all the planning that we want, but I'm a child of God. Like I said in the last time as a Christian, for me, I know that my steps are ordered of God. So I can do all the planning naturally and with my senses and with my intellect as much as I want. But then my faith comes in when I've done my part and either things go, like, I, I believe so much that what is mine always lands before me and always comes before me. So even if I've done all the planning and, you know, like, for example, um, just a couple of weeks ago, I saw a job, a teaching job, right? I saw a teaching job and I looked at the, the description of the teaching job and I was just like, oh my God, this is for me. Like, this is for me, this is for me, this is for me. And I'm the kind of person who, when I speak things that come to pass, right? I'm like, oh my God, this is for me. I saw that the deadline has passed, but that never stops me. I'm like, the deadline has passed, but that doesn't stop me from applying because 
even if they don't take me, they'll always ask me for a conversation and have some kind of thing or whatever. Cause it was really like, so aligned. So I applied for this job and I said to something to God in my own prayers, I said, okay, God, like, I know that there's a way that I can apply for jobs. I know how to get jobs. I know how to get jobs, but I also don't want to kind of get the kind of job that's going to take me off my path. I also don't want to get into the kind of business that's going to take me off my path. Like sometimes you can't see, like, even though you're using your rationality and your intellect to analyze, there's still so much that you don't know because you don't know the future. You don't know. I don't know who I'm going to see in that job. I don't know who my boss is going to be in that job. I don't know if the students are going to be great because I love my students where I am now. I don't know if the students are going to be great where I'm going. Right. So I always say, okay, God, this looks so perfect. I want to apply. It's so exciting. Like I'm excited. I'm applying, but, but if it's not for me and there's some craziness there, please, I don't want it. Like, I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it because sometimes we think what looks amazing is it but it's really not it because there's so much more that we don't see. So I'm going on and on about this because for me, that's really where my faith comes in. So when they emailed me and they were like, oh, sorry, the deadline has passed. I mean, obviously we can't, you know, we already offered the job to somebody else. I was like, okay, that's like, literally I was like, I was disappointed. I was like, oh, dang it. Because I've gotten jobs where the deadlines have passed before. So I was like, oh, but then I was like, you know what, God, thank you. Because for whatever reason, this is not the job for me. Then I was just like, you know what, let's have a conversation. So I'm I had a conversation with them after the fact, and we're going to find ways to work together anyway that are not confined to that particular job. And that's still offer me the flexibility that I want and that I like in the job that I have now at the university. So I'm saying this to you to say that you do your part intellectually. Absolutely. Do your part rationally. Absolutely. Because it's going to help you see as much as you can. But sometimes you're not going to be able to see everything. And you have two options. Either, like you said, you just choose one and you bear the consequences. And if it have, if, if the consequences are great, woohoo. If the consequences are not great, well, try again, you know, do something else. Or like me, I just resolve it to my faith. And I say, if it's really, even business partnerships, if it's meant to work out, I'm like, I know that this, I'm going to do my part. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to submit what I'm supposed to submit. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to get my team to do what they're supposed to do. But I don't force things to happen because I don't want to live against the grain of my life and my own faith. So it's not a simple answer, but I think you get it. Thank you. I think uh, Joseph asked a question in the comments. Okay, great. Thank you. Joseph, sorry, I didn't see your question. Joseph says, what was, what was that moment that made you feel like you had failed your goals and you had to adjust? Whew. In my career, my God. Um, definitely not getting into the PhD program. That was really horrible. Like, and let me tell you why. I'm a millennial and I'm a young millennial, okay? And in a way, I'm not like you guys, Gen Z, who was raised on social media, but in some ways I was raised somehow. Like I started my space really, really young. And like those, like those of us who've been involved for on social media for a long time, everybody and their mom knew that I was studying a PhD even before I got into a PhD program, okay? So... Everybody was like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Ellie, what are you doing after your master's? I'm like, oh, girl, you know, I'm not. They're like, are you applying for jobs? No. Why would I apply for jobs? I'm doing my PhD, right? And I was saying it with such pride. Like, why would I? Everybody's finishing their master's. Like, they're applying for jobs. It's a normal thing to do. Like, why would I apply for a job? I'm going back to school. I'm doing my PhD. I'm going to be a doctor. Only for me not to get into the PhD program, right? So it was really hard for me, not only from... Like uh, what, like what went wrong? I had everything, I had the perfect profile, but also because I told the whole world, <laughs> I told the whole world that I was going to be doing a PhD. <laughs> so it was really like, how do I adjust personally my own expectations? Because now I have to take a time off and do other things. But then how do I also adjust everybody else? right? And get them to understand that, no, 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 guys, it's not like I failed. I mean, I kind of failed, but I'm going to do it again. I'm going to try again. So for me, it was really, 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 it was very, I'm laughing about it now and I'm, I'm saying it very lightly, but when 
all your eggs were in, are in one basket, right? Literally, like your whole life planning is, I'm doing my master's and I'm doing my PhD. I don't want to work. I don't have no job. Like, I just want to focus on studies. And that thing is taken away. It's very confusing. It was very, I remember it being very confusing for me. I remember looking, trying to look ahead and I couldn't see. I couldn't see like, okay, just do it again. I couldn't even see that. I was just like, I've failed. I was stuck. I was sad. I was in denial. Like I said, it was really, 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 really difficult for me. It was really difficult for me. But thankfully, because of my mentors um, and having conversations with them who taught me how to really understand that failure is good because it teaches us a lot about who we are. And there, it's not a reflection about ourselves, but it's part of life. There are things we're going to try and do and we don't, we don't get them. It's normal. It's a part of life. So what you do is you try as much as possible to readjust, to, to talk to people who have more wisdom and knowledge, who can help you see things a lot differently. I could not see the next day. I could only see you didn't get into the PhD program. So every, every morning was like, you didn't get it. You didn't get it. You didn't get it. Until eventually I talked to my mentor and she was like, okay, you didn't get in now, but it, no one said you can never get into a program, right? Because for me, it was like, hey, I didn't get into a PhD program. That's it. I can never become Dr. Ellie. I can never become, like, that was all I had in my mind. So I had to see differently. I had to see differently. I had to see that, okay, I didn't get into it now, but it doesn't mean that a year from now I can't get it. So that taught me any time that I've faced personal challenges, or I've faced other types of challenges, failures or whatever, there's always another chance. I lost the first time that I hosted a huge event for my company. I lost money. I lost like 7,000, like $8,000 now. It might like lost it. Like I don't even like lost it because I didn't have a tight contract. I was doing business with somebody that I knew very, very closely. And I was just like, okay, we'll just have a, a word of mouth kind of contract where, you know, where I'm a, I'm a word of mouth kind of person. So that was another failure. I, at the end of the day, the person was like, we never had that conversation. You owe me $7,000, $8,000. And I was like, no, I don't. But at this point, I didn't have a choice because so much had been done, but to take the money and, and pay it. And that was extremely painful. So I also learned from that experience that, okay, just because I made a loss now does not mean I want to make an, another loss next year. But I, I learned that because of the failure of the PhD, that sometimes it's just a matter of changing perspective. Any other questions? I've got, you guys, I have stories for days, but any other questions and then we can round up? Uh, just, just one more question. Uh, so uh, in your presentation, you've mentioned mentors throughout and that actually, you, you make use of mentor, you make oh, use of mentor. Absolutely. Uh, so I just want to find out how do you know sometimes we see oh, let me get this person to mentor me and all that. But these people there are also people who are very busy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you possibly need an approach mentor so that you can always get your time. What do you advise for somebody who is looking for a mentor? And uh what should people be looking for in mentors, in their mentors? That's a fantastic question, Clifford. You're absolutely right that a lot of the times the people that we really, really want to mentor us might be people who are extremely busy, right? So for me, for example, when students or when young professionals come up to me to ask me to be their mentor, I'm happy, but then I also define to them, depending on where they are in the seasons of their lives, that we could potentially have a very untraditional kind of mentoring relationship where I'm happy to give them access to my workshops. I'm having to give them access to my, you know, to different um, public events like this, like, oh, come and join this. Because this is also a form of mentoring. It's also a form of coaching, right? So I think sometimes what we have to do is challenge ourselves to, to think beyond mentoring and coaching from a perspective of, I have to see you every week or talk to you every month or every other month in a traditional way, right? A lot of the times it's following the life of the person that you admire very closely, from time to time, asking them, hey, can I please buy you lunch? Can I please buy you a coffee? And just tell them, tell, talk to me about who you are. And you'll be surprised at how many people would lo just love to talk about themselves. And as they talk about themselves, you take notes. You take notes and you think about what they shared based on 
what you are working on. So ask them qu questions like you guys are asking, what's the biggest challenge you've had? What's the biggest failure you've had? They're talking about themselves, but then they're also going to tell you how they overcame that. And that becomes your solution, right? That becomes your solution. So that's one, one way of navigating mentoring relationships. One of the things that I always say to young people as well is instead of asking for somebody, if, instead of asking me for a meeting, ask me what my favorite book is. Dr. Conjay, what is your favorite book where you learned everything that you know? I'll give you my favorite book. I'm always happy to give you my favorite book. I'll tell you, go and read this. It has everything that can help you become the best of who you are as a person. That's still mentoring because I'm giving you knowledge. Because what's mentoring, right? It's your ability to give somebody knowledge and guidance, tools and resources to help them build who they are. So I might not meet with you one-on-one, -on -one, Clifford, like this, but I share resources all the time on my Instagram. I have a motivational word all the time on my Instagram. I've said to you guys, send a message. If you have a question, send me a message. It might take me a couple months. My PA might have to chase me for me to, to reply to that message, but eventually I will reply. Those are all different forms of mentoring and coaching that you can tap into and have access to that are not necessarily in the traditional way. Now, in the traditional form of mentoring, there are people out there who want to, like who have the capacity or Sometimes they have the capacity, but they don't even know that they can be great mentors. Sometimes it's just a matter of asking, right? One of my long life life mentors, Dr. Brown, is somebody I asked to mentor me when I was in college. I admired her from far. I thought she was the coolest woman to walk the face of earth outside of my mom. And I was just like, oh my God, this woman is just amazing. I loved how she talked and how she showed up in spaces. And I was just like, Dr. B, I know you're super, super busy, but can you mentor me? And I had to be ready for the correction that came with her mentorship, right? Because that's also part of it. When people invest in you, then in so many ways, you have to be ready to, to show up in a positive way um, that reflects positively on who they are. But ask, definitely ask. If there's somebody you admire out there, ask. But then sometimes if you see that these people are really, really busy, for example, tap into their network, listen to every time they have webinars, you know, join them when, whatever, depending on what they do, show up in the spaces where they are, where they're sharing about who they are and learn from them in that capacity. All right. Thank you very much. You're very, very welcome. Uh, you should recommend books for for you. <laughs> that is, you should drop books. <laughs> 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 Absolutely, I can't. So you can read, there's several books that you can read. You can read, read Intentional Living. This is my favorite book by John C. Maxwell. I think that's the only one I'll give you guys. It's just, and then when my book is out, I'll share it with, with Boniface to share with you guys when, when my leadership, my self-leadership and self-management book is out. But go and read Intentional Living by John C. Maxwell. It is absolutely, absolutely, absolutely life-changing. I think that's it, you guys. Any other questions? Joseph, it's nice to see your face. Thank you for, <laughs> for showing us, for finally showing us your face. Yeah, I'm around. <laughs> that's been so, a great okay. session, so I appreciate so much. I'm super happy to hear that. And like I shared with you guys last time, follow me on on Instagram, follow me on LinkedIn. My name on LinkedIn is exactly my name here on the webinar. I'm gonna share you guys my my Instagram handle. And that's the same one on, on, on Twitter as well. And from time to time, ask me questions. I'm happy to answer them when I have the when I have the time. I'll always come back, but it might take me a while sometimes. I think we're done. I think we don't have any more questions. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you so much, Ruth, for your very kind message. I really appreciate it. I see it in the chat right here. So thank you for the active participation of, of a lot of you. Be in touch, ask questions. And you know, if all goes well, I'll be seeing you guys hopefully in the next six months, six months early next year at some point. Uh, LinkedIn, this is her email. Mm -hmm. And then this. 
It's my personal state. <laughs> All right, I had to mute. I had to mute Joseph. All right, Boniface, over to you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for the two sessions. Uh, I've also learned a lot personally, and I hope uh, everyone who joined the two sessions have really learned a lot uh, throughout this. As you've requested, uh, we'll sit through this and uh, try to organize other sessions uh, whenever time allows, also from our speaker and also uh, to the participants. Uh, Cynthia was here, but I think uh, she has dropped off. But uh, yeah, we'll review this also from the education side and come up with more programs that uh, uh, involve such productive sessions. So from my side, I'll just want to thank you all for joining the session today. And uh, let's keep the conversation going. The learnings that we've gotten also share with the friends, uh, share with your circles, because obviously we say knowledge is a continuous process. And if you share it also with your friends, uh, even though they didn't join the session, but they will learn one or two things from this. So thank you all. I uh, will share again the recording of this. And uh, yeah, let's go through the materials, keep in touch with the speaker through the social media handles and uh, reach out in case there's something that you may need, uh, maybe more sessions or what, please feel free to reach out. Thank you all. Bye everybody, have a great weekend.